Well, hey there, busy kids. Welcome to a special bonus lesson. In this lesson, we are going to be working on a song by Taylor Swift called Antihero. We're going to learn this song in two parts. In this first part, I'm going to go over with you measure one through measure 13, so up until the chorus, okay? And then in our next lesson, we'll go over the chorus and then how it changes a little bit at the ending, all right? The trickiest thing about this piece, I think, is the rhythm. Um, and chances are you're familiar with that rhythm because like with many of these bonus songs, they're songs that you are learning because you love these songs and you've heard them before. So you may not need to analyze this rhythm and break it down. If you feel comfortable with the rhythm, you can fast forward through this next part while we go over the rhythm a little bit, but I'm gonna go over it with you just in case for those of you who need a little extra support learning the rhythm. And then we'll add um, the piano, right hand and left hand together. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we're gonna focus mostly on the right hand rhythm, and then when we get to the keyboard, we'll add the left hand in where it needs to go with the right hand, but I want us to really get familiar with the right hand rhythm because those are the words, the melody of the song, and that's the part that you're probably already familiar with if you know this piece. So if I were to write in the rhythm in these first two measures, this is how the beats line up, and you're welcome to copy this and write it in if it is helpful to you. So it's one, I have the rest, and two and a uh, the three is tied so i don't actually play that note i hold it and four and a uh. okay that's the first measure and then let's go ahead and write in the beats for the second measure one you can cross it out if you want because you don't play it it's tied and two and a uh, three and again you can cross that out because it's tied so you're just going to hold it and a uh, four and the four is also tied. So again, you can cross it out if it's helpful to you to remind you not to play it. Okay, now what I want us to do is practice clapping these beats. Be sure that you're holding your clap on the tied notes. You're not clapping again, you're just holding it. Okay, we'll take it nice and slow. Ready, go. One and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and a four and. I tried to whisper the ones where you're not playing anything. So if you notice this um, eighth note, eighth note, and a tie, that repeats here, that same group of rhythm notes. We have eighth note, eighth note, 16th note, tie, eighth note, eighth note, 16th note, tie. Okay, so once you get the hang of that, eighth note, eighth note, 16th note, tie. Okay, then it, that rhythm repeats itself a lot and it's gonna repeat itself down here too. Okay, let's try clapping it one more time. Ready, go. One and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and a four and. So this part's a little bit sneaky here where the rhythm changes on us, okay? I'm going to play it now while we count it together. So I want you to get used to hearing the rhythm while we're counting it, okay? Let's try saying it with the counts. Ready, go and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and a four and okay let's do that one more time together ready go one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and a four and now if we were to say the words let's just try saying the words while i play it this time okay ready go I have this thing where I get older, but just never wiser. That's how it fits together when we say the words, okay? If it's easier for you to say the words, as long as you're doing them in the correct rhythm, that is perfectly fine. All right, the other part I wanna go through for this first rhythm before we try it at the piano is measure nine. Okay, things are pretty straightforward if you look here in this. Um, these are all straightforward. All of a sudden we just get into these straight notes. Right, pretty straightforward until we get to measure nine where she says tail as old as ta a I'm. It's gonna, the counting if I were to write it in is one and two and three and a four and. Okay, I'm holding that for the four and. One and two and three and a four and. Let's try clapping it while I play it. Ready, go. One and two and three and a four and. 
all right? So those are the complicated rhythm parts in this first part. I want you to notice I didn't go over measure three. It is a complicated rhythm again, but it's the same exact rhythm as measure one. So once you can play this part, I have this thing where I get older. You can also play Midnight's Become My Afternoons because it's exactly the same rhythm, okay? All right, let's take it to the piano and give it a try. All right, now the most complicated part, in my opinion, about taking this difficult rhythm to the keys is our key signature. You'll notice we have four sharps, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. Now remember, a sharp is where we raise the note a half step. So F sharp, if I raise the note a half step, I'm playing this note. C sharp, C sharp, I'm playing this note. G sharp, G, raise the note a half step, this middle black key here. And D sharp is this black key here. So these four black keys are in this piece quite a bit, and it takes a little bit of getting used to if you're not familiar with that many sharps in a piece. Okay, so just something to warn you about a little bit. I'm gonna be starting on the G sharp, two Gs above middle C. So here's middle C, G, G. I'm going up to this G sharp here in the middle with finger three, and then I'm going to play I have this thing where I get old. So I'm going down to the F sharp here. So I'm playing G sharp, B, and then F sharp. And then when I move down, it's to the D sharp for measure two. So I need to put my thumb on this D sharp. Okay, it's a little bit tricky there. And then you're gonna slide the thumb back up, okay? So watch me do that again. I have this thing where I get older. I go down to the D sharp, but just never wiser. And you can also slide up to the three if that's easier. Okay, and then you're gonna repeat that same thing with the G sharp here. All right, that's the first section there. Okay, so I want you to pause the video and just try playing that a couple of times. Make sure that you remember F sharp, G sharp, D sharp, C sharp, because there's a lot of them in those first three measures. Go ahead, pause the video, try that much, and then press play. All right, now you'll notice we have a first and second ending here. You're basically just going to repeat that, but instead of playing the first ending, you'll go to the second ending. Okay, I wanna line up our left hand now with our right hand. Left hand is pretty repetitive throughout this first 13 measures, okay? You're gonna be going back and forth between an interval of a fifth and an interval of a fourth, okay? So I'm down, here's my middle C. I'm on this two A's below middle C with finger five. And then I'm gonna alternate between this hand shape and the B. So you have all these sharps going on in the right hand, but you don't have to worry about that much in the left hand, okay? My rhythm is a little bit syncopated. It's this, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, A and two, E, two, two, B and two, E, three, four. All right, let's just try playing it together. So get your left hand in position. One, two, ready, go. One and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four. That's all it needs to do for that first part, okay? And it's gonna actually continue doing that through <laughs> the remainder of this lesson video at least. All right, now when we put that together, the A comes on the rest at the beginning of the piece. So it's one and two and three and four and a. Okay, now I'm not gonna spend a ton of time going over the rhythm because we already did that, so I don't want you starting this part of the video unless you're really confident in the rhythm. Um, but I do just wanna point out where things line up. And if it's easier for you, one of my favorite tricks is to drum the rhythm at first to just make sure right hand and left hand are lining up together. So if I'm drumming it, it looks like this. One and two and a three and four and a. Okay, that's how it drums together. Let's just try drumming it once. Ready, go. One and two and a three and four and a. If we keep that going, then we have this coming in again on the one. It's gonna be a common thing where left hand comes in right on the first beat. One 
and two, and a three, and a four, and. Okay, so it's the same rhythm in the left hand, but it's gonna line up a little bit differently in the right hand. One, and two, and a three, and a four, and. Okay, if you have that, you are welcome to try it at the piano. If you need to practice strumming it a few more times, press pause and go ahead and do that. So when I put it on the piano now, it'll sound like this. One and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and a four and. All right, that's how it'll sound when it's together. I'd like you to go ahead and pause the video and try putting those first four measures together on your own and then press play. Okay, now a quick note about pedal here. You don't need to play this piece with the pedal if you don't want to. If you'd like to add a little pedal, I tend to just follow the rhythm of my left hand where I'm lifting at the, every time my left hand plays a new, new note. And it sounds like this. And then if I add it together. how it sounds with the pedal okay so if you want to try it with the pedal go ahead pause it try hands together with the pedal and then press play all right let's pick up on measure six now right we have the first ending and the second ending and then we're going to go into measure six we have these really even eighth note beats now okay i think the trickiest part of this is just because there's a lot of repeated eighth notes that sometimes i lose my place so saying the words can be helpful here um, in my opinion, if you know the words really well, that's a big help for this part. I moved, so I was up here before, right? I'm moving down to this E here, and then I'm gonna have G sharp in the middle of my chord. I'm playing an E major chord here, okay? And so it's, I should not be left to my own devices. When I repeat this F sharp, I'm gonna switch to finger three here, they come with prices, then I reach my thumb to B, and vices, I end up in crisis. Okay, so lots of repeated notes there, and you just wanna make sure you're playing them all nice and evenly. Um, remember, she kind of emphasizes this as she's singing it. It's like uh, punching the words a little bit, so you can do that with the notes. So go ahead, pause the video, practice that section for measures six, seven, and eight. Be sure that you observe the fingering and the F sharp and G sharp in there, and then press play. Okay, now we have tale as old as time in measure nine. Okay, I was here before. You're gonna sneak finger four up to B here. Tail as old as time. I have a C sharp and a G sharp there that I need to watch out for, okay? Let's try playing that together and counting it. Ready, go. One and two and three e and a four and. Let's try it together one more time. Ready, go. Tail as old as time. All right. So now we're gonna add our left hand in. It's gonna repeat what it was doing in the first four measures again, where we go same rhythm, same notes, alternating between the fifth and the fourth, okay? Again, the trick is just gonna be lining it up correctly with the right hand. So if I'm just tapping the rhythm to try that, I'm gonna start on the pickup to six where it says I should. So it's, I should not be left to my own devices. They come with prices and vices. I end up in crisis. Tail as old as time. Okay, let's just try drumming that together. Ready, go. I should not be left to my own devices. They come with prices and vices i end up in crisis tail as old as time all right if that felt pretty good to you and you're able to line those hands up well then we can try it hands together at the piano i'm going to go really slowly and just play the first couple measures for you so you can hear it i should not be left to my own devices they come with prices 
sand. Now you try. All right, and then the next two measures will sound like this. Vices I end up in crisis, tail as old as time. So the as is where I'm playing those notes together, okay? So again, those, those two measures, measures eight and nine, sound like this. Vices I end up in crisis, tail as old as time. You try. All right, now it's gonna be the same kind of thing, same rhythm, but a little bit of different notes. So my, my left hand comes in on B1, and then I have the I wake up screaming from. When I play that G sharp the second time on Dream, I'm gonna to switch to finger four, and then I have a lot of F sharps here. So again, I think that saying the words is really helpful. So it's in one day I'll watch as you're leaving. I switch on the ing of leaving, okay? And then my thumb comes to B. Cause you got tired of my, and don't forget G sharp there, ski. And then on ming, you're gonna bring your thumb to the E for the last time. So I bring four up to B and I can't forget that C sharp with finger five there, okay? So go ahead, pause the video, try just running through those measures with your right hand only, try saying the words and make sure that you're observing the G sharp and F sharp in there and then press play. All right, now let's add our left hand in. Again, it's doing the same thing. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Where we just have those fifths and fourths, okay? It's gonna switch in the chorus, but we won't worry about that till the next video. So if I'm lining it up, it's gonna sound like this. You can just watch this first time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. All right, let's go ahead and try drumming it together. Let's try saying the words this time. I feel like that might be a little bit easier. Okay, ready, go. I wake up screaming from dreaming one day. I'll watch as you're leaving cause you got tired of my scheming for the last time. All right, if you need to pause the video, practice drumming it a couple more times on your own. I'm gonna go ahead and play that section for you so you can hear how it will sound and then I want you to try this part on your own. I wake up screaming from dreaming one day I'll watch as you're leaving cause you got tired of my scheming for the last time and I came in late there on the E so it's ing for the last time so it needs to come in on the last okay so go ahead pause the video try those four measures on your own and then press play all right, nice job. If you need lots of practice after this, I totally understand. There's lots of little things in this piece that is difficult. I'm gonna go ahead and play those first 13 measures for you with the first and second ending so that you can hear what it'll sound like after you've put it hands together. Mm -hmm. 